So is Sora 2 an AI video slot meme machine, or is there a real powerhouse under the hood? Well, to be honest, it's a little bit of both, but after uncovering a few secret superpowers in Sora 2, well, I think you're gonna be surprised of what this model is capable of. But, it, I mean, it's also a mess. Don't worry, Sora haters, we're gonna go over all of that too. Uh, hey, why am I even doing this intro? Okay, let's dive in to see the highs and lows of Sora. Oh! Kicking off, I know that as of this video, some of you are still waiting on access codes. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit, and I, I do have a way that you might be able to score one. Now, there are two ways to access Sora 2. Uh, one, of course, through the app, but uh, I am happy to report that the website has been refreshed. So that's where we're gonna be spending uh, our time in this video. Functionality is the same across both, but I just prefer working off desktop. Hey, it's Bob Ross over there. Um, and, you know, obviously Sora 2 is primarily text to video based, although we are going to be looking at some really interesting tricks coming up in a little bit. Both versions are identical in terms of options and use. Uh, obviously, you know, we have our text bar here. Uh, text prompts seem to be hovering around 850 characters, so like no JSON prompting or anything like that. Uh, we also do have options to choose the orientation, either in portrait or in landscape, uh, the ability to upload reference images. We're going to talk about that in a little bit because uh, there's some limitations, but some powerhouses as well. Uh, and of course, the ability to add in cameos. Cameos are for sure the killer feature of Sora 2. And this is where I think that we can begin to split Sora into two separate categories. The first obviously being the fun, like social meme side of things where you can generate videos of yourself and, you know, permissions granted, allow others to generate videos of you and vice versa. For example, here's one of me where I cameoed YouTube's Matt Wolf in a recreation of a true story. Play tonight. Yeah, I can't move two steps without bumping into Whoa. a food truck. Whoa, hold up. See that place? The pizza spot. Yeah, but look inside, ring light, cameras. That's him. You're right, he's streaming. I'm gonna say hi. To let you in? Only one way to find out. Yeah, that happened about a month ago in New York. Uh, just as an FYI, the streamer was iShow Speed, and uh, security uh, was a lot quicker to respond than was depicted in the video. A lot more of them, too. They were all very nice, though. So while there are some video issues here, clearly Sora does not know that Matt is the taller one between the two of us. Uh, still, I mean, I think it's pretty good. Now, it is for sure not perfect. It will often confuse voices or merge characters together, uh, like this example where it fused me and Sam Altman together. What is that? The walls are flickering. Oh no, this isn't real. I'm stuck in the training data. Sora 2's training data, I can't get out. Someone, anyone, help me. Tim, you're safe. It's just a snapshot. Or it might just totally lose your voice and you know some of your likeness altogether. Who are you? My name is Tim, and I thank you for watching. And listen, I'm just gonna say that I'm kind of getting a ping from an internal radar that's making me think that that AI Tim, that he's not that interested in you fancy lady. But I do have to say that when it hits, I mean, it, it does hit. It hasn't let up all week. Figures, nights like this, the city keeps its secrets. Detective? Door was locked. You picked it or you just don't care. I need your help. Someone's been following me and I wanna know who. I like how AI me is like, I'm not smoking. You didn't catch me smoking. Uh, but yeah, I mean, overall voice and tone, I mean, pretty good. So in general, I, I do think that there's a lot of fun to be had here with cameoing uh, your friends into videos, uh, like this action movie trailer with myself and friend of the channel, Dave Clark. Undercover cops with nothing to lose. Punch it, hang on. When the city ignites. You ever gonna let me drive? Not if you like the car. We need that package. Talk, or you're gonna wish we were the bad guys. This summer, Justice or even just checking in to see what others are doing with your cameo, uh, as YouTube's own Matt Vid Pro did to me here. First scroll YouTube and an AI channel pops up with one of those faces. They're not smiling, they're not frowning. It's like they just saw a ghost and remember they left the oven on. Every thumbnail looks like, I taught a toaster feelings, here's what happened in the faces. Sora calling me out and doing me dirty and using me to do it. I mean, that's well played. Uh, and as a quick side note on Sora's like, you know, improved and accurate physics, Matt Wolf cameoed myself and again, fellow YouTuber, Wes Ross into this. Let's see what you got. Timer set. Go for it. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Nice and clean. Time locked. All right, your turn. 
And I just want to point out that is accurate physics because that's exactly what would happen if I tried to backflip. And it's funny, you know, because in my last video on Sora, I did say, I don't know who actually wants an AI video social app, but uh, look, I mean, I'm going to walk that back. It actually is a lot of fun. I don't know if the novelty is going to wear off quickly, but I will say that over the last 48 hours, I have been really enjoying it. And just circling back on the, I don't know who wants this comment, um, you know, pretty wrong there considering that uh, the Sora app is now number three on the App Store charts. So taking a big old bite of the humble pie that they serve over at the Altman Diner, uh, I did end up turning on my cameo for everyone, something that I said I was not going to do. Um, yeah, so I don't know, go have fun, make me do stupid stuff. So all that out of the way and moving over to the cinematic and filmmaking side of things, and here is where things get really interesting. Uh, but before we jump into that, a quick word from today's sponsor, Bolt. You know that feeling when you try out one of those no code or AI coding tools? At first, it's amazing. You type a prompt and like instantly you start seeing your vision come to life. But then things kind of fall apart. You get error loops, broken features, and suddenly you're stuck prompting to solve something that you don't even understand, or at least I don't understand. And that's not to say that AI vibe coding tools don't work, but there can be a bit of a disconnect when you're trying to bring your project up to spec for full production. And listen, I am no expert on that side of things. I mean, I just know when stuff works and when it doesn't. But developers have been using tools like Claude Code to build and ship 10 times faster and scaling to millions of users. Uh, how do they do it? Well, they're also using a whole set of tools that are locked behind terminals, gits, and a whole pile of backend setup that well, most of us just never touch. But that changes with Bolt 2, which serves as a bridge between vibe coding and well, the powerhouse of new developments in agents, but more importantly, combining it with backend services like Superbase and Netlify. So for the first time, the same professional grade AI agents that power Fortune 500 companies are now inside a simple browser interface that what you can use with plain language. No terminals, no config headaches, no juggling five accounts just to launch one project. The database, the payments, the integrations, it's all set up automatically. Uh, let me show you. If I prompt in, I want a site where users can book tickets for a live stream concert where I will be playing guitar along with AI generated backing tracks. Pretty quickly, we have a functioning site. Now granted, I do have to play three concerts apparently, but I didn't specify. But yeah, I mean, you can book tickets and uh, things things work. Now, is anyone actually going to buy tickets to a concert of me playing along with AI generated backing tracks? No, but that's not the point. The point is that Bolt can build this for me, even allowing for payment processing through Stripe. Bolt V2 is a big jump forward. No more, you're absolutely right, apologies. Real apps, real infrastructure, without needing to be a developer. The best part, you can demo Bolt V2 for free. Just click the link down below. Moving on, so obviously a lot of you that watch this channel tend to be on the power user side uh, and may have felt a bit disappointed by some of the guardrails and current limitations of Sora 2. And look, I do totally get that, but I do think that this will be temporary and certainly lifted before Sora 2 Pro drops but that doesn't mean that the model isn't capable of generating some pretty remarkable outputs. Uh, take Viking Woman here. Hold the line. We finished this. I mean, to me, this looks as good as, well, at least Sora 1 promised, or taking this Friday the 13th inspired text to video shot that we ran a few videos back and, you know, in Sora. <laughs> Now, is this perfect? I mean, no, of course it's not, but uh, it did pick up on, you know, some nice little cues from the prompt, like, uh, you know, that VHS look with grain flicker and muted neon glow. Uh, additionally, though I never called Jason out, uh, it, it was like a, uh, uh, was a, a killer with a cracked hockey mask uh, advancing relentlessly. I mean, we all know who that is. And clearly, I mean, in terms of IP, no one cares about Jason anymore. It's, it's a shame. But obviously the big complaints here are, well, the lack of ability to generate image to video with characters in them and control. And while I don't have perfect solutions here for you, uh, I do think that you're gonna kind of be wowed here. Starting off on the character side, although we can't generate realistic people, uh, apparently animated characters seem to be just fine. Starting off with this as a reference image and prompting for the characters to be talking and then the camera to whip up to reveal like uh, something Lovecraftian floating in the sky, this was our output. What? 
What happened to the world? I don't know. But whatever did this, it's still out there. That's pretty good. I didn't give any details on, you know, what the Lovecraftian monster should look like because, well, I mean, that way madness lies. Uh, but Sora definitely nailed the assignment knew what I was looking for and provided it for me. Heading into a different direction with the same idea, uh, I ended up grabbing an image. We've used these guys on the channel in the past, kind of like these uh, like Ronin uh, stop motion type characters and giving it a prompt of um, a stop motion animation about a group of Ronin who are protecting a helpless village from a band of marauders. Uh, yes, it is a Kurosawa movie. They'll be here any moment. Hold steady. We won't let them pass for the village. I mean, it's interesting. The compression is a little on the crunchy side for sure. I'm not sure if it completely nailed uh, the aesthetics all the way through, but it is really fascinating to see. Now, I do want to point out that it doesn't always work, especially with like faster motion type stuff like we see here. Uh, we get kind of like a wonky eyeball there. Interestingly, you can kind of see between frames um, that it kind of goes into a 3D model look and then reverts back to an animated look. I do think that's pretty interesting. Now, on the cinematic side of things, again, although we can't upload images with characters, uh, we can reference locations. And I mean, the results are pretty impressive. For example, taking one of my espionage type prompts and just running that just straight, just Sora, we get this. You're late. And you're jumpy. Comes with the territory. Is it all here? Every frame, unless you edited the brief. You wouldn't be standing here if I had. That's what worries me. But now adding in this location as a reference image and running the exact same prompt. You came alone? I wouldn't be here if I hadn't. Then hand it over. Only if I know it reaches the right hands. That's not your concern. So yeah, that version, you know, a lot more dynamic, but also showcases that you can not only get a consistent location, but, you know, kind of create a consistent visual look. The other kind of insane thing we can do is sort of a variation on the VO3 first frame hack uh, in which we take an image like this and then just prompt for something completely different. Uh, here, it's a scene from a cinematic sci-fi film. Uh, flames move closer towards the bridge and uh, we cut to a hero character on the bridge in a truck trying to outrun it. Come on, girl, hold together. Don't quit on me now. Control, I'm still on the span. How far to the gate? Waves accelerating. You need to clear in 60 seconds. Then we're not stopping. I should point out that image referencing locations, uh, this works with cameos as well. Uh, for example, you know, taking a bridge scene that we've used here a couple of times before and then cameoing myself into it for a aliens inspired output. The beacon, right? Distress signals riding that frequency. Yeah. And it's coming from LV-426. Command wants us to take a look. They also said it could be a glitch. That rock eats ships, 50 below in daylight, acid storms. And now, is that the exact bridge that we referenced? It, it, no, it's not. It does seem to be like the Sora version of it. But it does seem uh, to replicate each time you use that reference image, generating up essentially the Sora version of that bridge. But here is where things get really crazy. Uh, I picked up on this one from Reza Safai, who uh, actually I credit as having the first user generated Sora 2 clip in the wild. Uh, but yeah, check this out. So utilizing a storyboard sequence from Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds uh, and bring that in as an image reference and then running that. What in the world? They're everywhere. So, I mean, that's pretty wild. So building off of Reza's findings, uh, I started out with this storyboard sequence from one of the Bond films, actually. And uh, well, the results actually ended up kind of surprising me. It's not quite what I was looking for. I'm trying. Three, two, now. Oh my God. We're in, let's move. So yeah, that was actually kind of shocking to me. Uh, it does obviously have a very like 90s animation kind of vibe. Um, so I, I knew that I wanted to experiment a little bit more with this. So I ended up taking uh, this storyboard sequence. Now, to be honest, I don't know what this sequence is from. It's listed as weapon of choice. It's probably either a working title or a code name, uh, you know, but clearly we have this, you know, high speed action sequence uh, involving a, a car, a motorcycle and some characters. So bring this in, There's, that's a lot of information and just saying, uh, make me a cinematic movie based off of this storyboard. He's still on us. I see him. He's gone, he's gaining. Hold on. I'm taking him. Uh, now, is it every shot? No, it doesn't appear to be, but again, 
Uh, it's pretty close and there was a lot of information. So turning the pace down a little, uh, I grabbed a page from Blueberry, which is a pretty famous uh, Franco-Belgian Western comic book. Uh, and then running this. The sun's nearly gone. Yeah, we should finish before the night takes it all. He was brave. You were too. Bravery doesn't feel like much tonight. Really surprising, right? Now, I will admit it's a little jump cutty, but uh, that's actually not Sora's fault. Uh, since the actual comic, uh, while it does work as comic book panels, they, they don't necessarily translate one to one. But I mean, a lot of like pretty much our shots are here. So uh, this is identical to our initial shot here. Uh, we do then cut over. Uh, it looks like they combined these two uh, to this shot. It does get a little jumpy here, uh, mostly because, you know, they are jump cuts within the comic as well. Um, but, you know, by the time we get uh, to here, that would be this shot. And then, you know, finally we end on our shovel shot here. Crazy, right? So getting a bit more intentional, uh, I took another actual storyboard. Uh, this one's called Escape Sequence. I don't know what it's from. Um, there's helicopters, soldiers, and uh, cars in a hangar. Uh, it looks very expensive and probably directed by Michael Bay. Uh, running this. Man team in position, approaching rooftop. Copy that, all units move on the target. Let's take them alive. Go, go, go. Teams one and two, flank left, three with me. Suspects heading for the inner hall. And once again, these are the shots. I mean, there's some changes uh, between storyboard to uh, output, but I mean, that happens in like real productions as well. And as a final test on this, well, anyone want to take a trip to the Moulin Rouge? Look to the sky, boys, the night's about to bloom. A shimmer of stars, a spark in the room. She flies, she shines, we can't help but believe. I'm the dream you came for and I won't let you leave. Again, kind of gobsmacked. Uh, now, I will fully admit that I did get some prompt kickback on a few of these, uh, one of which was actually the storyboards for Batman the Animated Series, which look, I mean, I get fair game there. I'll say that I felt a bit of a prompt roller coaster over the last 48 hours. It does very much feel like they're kind of fine tuning the guardrails there. Uh, and obviously considering that Sora 2 is, well, currently plastered in watermarks and, you know, to be honest, kind of has a bit of a crunchy 720p look. I mean, it's not quite ready for primetime production. We'll obviously see all of that in a few weeks when Sora 2 Pro releases. Yeah, the $200 one. I know it's a tough pill to swallow, but I mean, I guess kind of understandable considering how much these models cost to run. So at the end of the day, is this the best video model on the market right now? Uh, no, and also maybe yes. It all kind of depends on what you're looking for as a fun social meme platform to have fun with your friends. Uh, yes, I mean, nothing else even comes close. For cinematic or more commercial type outputs, no, at least not in its current state. We'll, we'll have to see what happens when we get the pro mode in a few weeks. And today I wanna to share what the new pro mode is all about. When you switch it on, the model renders at the native resolution of 8,000 pixels across, true 8K from end to end. In the meantime, if you haven't gotten a Sora invite yet, I did put a few at the bottom of the description of this video. It, they are the only ones that I have, so first come, first serve. Uh, if I get more, I will you know, uh, update them out. Other than that, my suggestion would be to check out the OpenAI Discord in the Sora channel. Uh, there are a lot of codes that are floating around, but you do have to be quick. And also, don't buy any codes. There are a lot of scams, obviously, going around. Other than that, I mean, I'm sure that I'll be back soon enough. Uh, this apparently turned into Sora week, so I'm going to go circle around and see what has happened in the like non-OpenAI side of the news. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.